uh, HIV has never been cured. You may not be that aware of it anymore because people are being treated and they're not showing up with symptoms around you and Hollywood's not making movies. But there's a million people that are infected in the US, more than a million, and they're suffering. They're suffering because they have to take a poison pill, basically an antiretroviral that is a mild chemotherapeutic every single day to control the virus. It's critically important to actually find a cure for HIV because these folks are suffering daily consequences of taking those pills of uh, things like nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, headaches. But long term, the cost of maintaining these patients is tremendously high because of early aging, bone density issues, osteoporosis, brittle bones, liver, kidney, heart disease, and extra cancers. At AGT, we think that curing HIV is possible, and we are actually in a phase one clinical trial uh, with a cell therapy that will convert an HIV positive individual into permanently immune to HIV, a one and done cell therapy. We draw a leukopac from the uh, patient, we put it into processing, it makes a cell product, we put it back into the patient, vein to vein should be approximately a month, and after that, they should be functionally cured never able to infect anybody else, never able to get AIDS, and never ever able to recontra recontract HIV. That's the amazing thing. HIV would be out of their lives forever. There would be no danger to anybody around them, and they would be living a normal life without all those side effects of that toxic chemotherapy. When do you think, uh, when do we think we might be able to get this done? Well, in summer, uh, we think we will be able to start to announce safety data. Why is that? We're already five patients in the first uh, cohort of six patients enrolled in the study. We will be reinfusing the first cell product, we believe, in late April, early May, and then we should be able to uh, report the safety data very quickly because it's an open label study. Everybody in the study is HIV positive. So we'll have some safety data for you this summer. And then by the year end, we should be able to show efficacy signal. Now, what would that efficacy signal look like? Well, we think that we can get markers from their blood that show that this is working, but it may even be as good as people getting off their antiretrovirals. The study doesn't require them to get off their antiretrovirals, but they could do that on their own if they wish. If they do go off their antiretrovirals, normal viral rebound to full viremia is 21 days. So we would know 21 days after they go off of their antiretrovirals whether this one and done therapy is suppressing the virus on its own. So that would be a very exciting finding. I think there's a reasonable chance that somebody will choose to do that. But if not, we will have data that is convincing to scientists in its place that will be measurements of the blood that show that this product is working. Obviously, this would be huge. Uh, curing HIV, you know there are 37, 000, uh, 37 million people worldwide that are infected. There are 1.2 million approximately in the United States. There's probably four to five million insured uh, worldwide that have HIV. And uh, so this is, you know, a game changer uh, if we can do it. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I am quite confident that we can do it. I think we're gonna do it in this study, but uh, we know that we have something that is likely to be efficacious, and we also know lots of ways to tweak this if we need to debug it and make it even better. But I actually think we've got enough potency in the current study. So first of all, let me show you how it works. One is we go ahead and leukophorese the patient. So we're taking a 400 milliliter leuka pack. This is all outpatient. It immediately goes into a benchtop unit which does all of the processing automatically. We have developed software on the Milteni Prodigy that will go ahead and essentially automatically take that blood, sort out the HIV specific T cells, uh, modify them so they're immune to HIV and culture them up to a billion cells. And what we're doing is we're restoring normal immune response to HIV so that these T cells that are put back into the body can actually create a normal immune response to HIV that keeps you clear, keeps patients clear. After that, we just have to go ahead and we cryopreserve it and we take a portion of it to do the release testing. And once the release testing is done, we can reinfuse it. So everything in this process is outpatient. As a matter of fact, 
even the phase one clinical st uh, uh, study does not require any inpatient treatment, any hospitalization. And uh, we've been doing this product now for quite a long time. Obviously, we, we had to make this product without reinfusing it into patients during the IND enabling studies. And what we saw was the blood product was remarkable at clearing itself of HIV. As a matter of fact, it was orders of magnitude better than has ever been seen in any product before. And that's one of the reasons that my confidence level is so high that it is possible to cure HIV. We could dump as much HIV and as many latently infected cells as we wanted to into this blood product and it cleared itself. Now, um, this didn't just come out of thin air. <laughs> the people that are working on this project, including my colleague, uh, David Pauza, have been in this industry, have been studying HIV and know gene and cell therapy, virology and immunology like the back of their hand and they've been in this for decades. David Pauza has been in this business for four decades. We were lucky to pick him up from the Institute of Human Virology where he was already a leader in research with HIV and combining his talents with the gene and cell therapy technologies that we were developing at AGT has led us to this day. But everybody on the team is massively experienced. That gives me great confidence. The next thing that gives me a lot of confidence is that we're starting with about a million cells when we do the leukapheresis and a million cells that are not immune to HIV. Well, what are we doing? At the end of this, we have a billion cells that are actually immune to HIV. That is the difference between being immune to HIV and being a victim of HIV, is that the HIV viron can no longer infect the T cells that are supposed to be protecting your body because that's how HIV gets in. It, it actually has evolved the capability of infecting the CD4 positive T cells that are the helper T cells that actually are the conductors of the orchestra that mount the entire immune response against HIV. It infects them and it makes them the beachhead of the infection instead of the sentinel T cells that were there to protect you. Well, now we're putting back into your body or into the body of an HIV infected individual a billion CD4 positive T cells that are immune to HIV. HIV cannot escape that. And as a result also, these are called helper T cells because they will go ahead and create a CD8 response, cytotoxic response, that is what's called degenerative. In other words, it will catch mutations of HIV in the body. And then it also generates an antibody response. Can you believe that? HIV takes out your whole immune system by just taking out that conductor. We're putting the conductor back in there, a billion of them. All right, so how does that compare with the last time that this was tried? Well, Syngamo did a similar study. Now, we have a lot more sophisticated approach to this because we're putting in not just siRNAs that knock out CCR5 to protect the membrane from, the, from binding with the uh, HIV viron, but we're putting siRNAs inside the cell that knock out conserved regions of HIV as well. So it's protective against R5 versions and X4 tropic versions. All sounds very technical, but the bottom line is, is that it's about three times as broad as the Syngamo study. The other thing is, is we're using siRNAs created off of an installed gene that will persist in the CD4 cell for the life of the cell. And what that means is that um, the siRNAs can knock out both alleles, the messages from both alleles for the CCR5 gene. So it's completely stripping uh, CCR5 in 95% of the modified cells. In the Syngamo study, they were only getting 10% of the cells depleted of CCR5 sufficiently that the virus couldn't get in, all right? But then here's the kicker. Our number of cells that we're returning is 2,000 times better than the Syngamo best case. Well, why is that exciting? Syngamo got one in 10 patients in durable remission. What might we get with something that is three times broader, nine times more reliable, 95% of the cells instead of 10% of the cells, and 2,000 times the dose? I think we're gonna cross the threshold of functional cure in more than 10% of the patients. I think it's possible we're gonna get all the patients. That's what I'm hoping to see. But if we don't see that, there's lots of ways we can ratchet it up. If we need to make that 4,000, we can make it 4,000. We're also working on vectors that are 100 times more effective than the current vectors at modifying the cells. Shh, okay? So we've got plans to knock this thing out. I think we're gonna do it this year, as I said. Now here's another reason why I'm so confident, 
is that we went ahead and we showed our preclinical data to NIAD. Remember NIAD? That's Tony Fauci's organization. Tony Fauci has nothing to do with this project, so I'm dropping his name here, but I don't wanna make a big deal out of that. But I will say his right-hand man, Taewok Chen, looked at our data and said he wanted a, a collaborative research agreement with us so that he could validate our data in his lab. Now remember, he runs one of the top HIV labs in the world. They're right down the street from us. That's why we got a chance to show them our data, but they found it remarkable too. They found it so remarkable that they wanted to see whether it was even correct. Well, we gave them the reagents. They did it on their own patients. They made the same blood product. They did the same HIV challenge tests. They got the same data that we did. Remember what I said? Orders of magnitude better than has ever been seen before. All right? This is the collaborative research agreement. Guess what happened after that? Well, they wrote an article about our cell process. Read that article, okay? It'll make you a believer. What it shows you uh, is all the details of the cell process. So if you wanna be technical about this, read that article. But I think what it also shows is that what we have is more potent than necessary to keep these patients uh, suppressed from their HIV viremia for life without antiretrovirals. That is the key. That's what's called a functional cure. Functional cure basically means as good as cured. Well, why is this as good as cured? It doesn't matter if you have a teeny bit of viral reservoir in your bloodstream. If you have the immune system that can wipe out the virons if any of them arise and that will wipe out the cells that are birthing the virons with CD8 cytotoxic cells and that have antibodies to slow it down and that you can never infect anybody and you can never get AIDS, you can never progress to AIDS and you don't need antiretrovirals What's the difference between that and being cured? That's the word functional. It's as good as a cure, and I think we're gonna see it this year. And I think this article is some really, really good evidence of that. It's in molecular therapy, go ahead and look it up. Thank you.